Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video, we're going to take a look at the role of concentric strength in terms of improving acceleration and jump performance. For athletes, in the context of sprinting, you have to move your body from zero momentum as quickly as possible, and to do this requires a specific type of strength, or I should say strength types. Potentially at the start, you're more reliant on concentric strength, muscle shortening actions. This is due to the fact that the stretch reflex can't operate from a zero position, or zero momentum position I should say, in the same way as it can once you get going. So, to get that initial drive out of the blocks, you need to emphasise concentric strength. So you can see here, Jonathan's triple extension on his acceleration and now he's doing squats that also utilise the triple extension movement too. He controls the lowering phase and then explodes upwards. Triple extension requires you to extend or open the ankle, knee and hip joints to get that push. Another way to develop this concentric ability to dynamically push out of the blocks or move yourself from zero momentum is to use a slow lower eccentric movement before the concentric action part of a squat. This tends to reduce the impact of the stretch reflex and requires you to really focus on that push upwards. And of course you're getting the benefit of training eccentrically as well. Regular viewers will know that I'm very much into triphasic training and particularly for the long and triple jump emphasising the eccentric and isometric actions as well as the concentric one. When training for acceleration, focus on explosive movements. Keep the reps relatively low, 4 to 6, and lift a heavy weight. Try mixing single and double leg squats. OK, you can lift more with a double leg squat, but obviously sprint acceleration and other athletic movements inevitably require single movements, unilateral ones. We are going to take a look at some other ways to condition acceleration. Regular channel viewers will know that I also advocate complex or contrast training methods. That's where you combine plyometrics and weights into one workout. And, therefore, I have some specific workouts that are designed to emphasise acceleration and concentric actions over stretch reflex plyometric ones. For example, these sit and jump onto another box, box jumps. To get the real acceleration boosting benefit, you need to keep your feet still on the ground, unlike how Jonathan reacted that time. Press the heels into the ground before you leap upwards. It's actually very difficult to do, as you can also see with Daniel failing to keep his feet in contact with the ground before he moves up into the jump, although he's doing it slightly better than Jonathan. And, of course, you can also do this exercise one leg at a time, as Daniel and now Jonathan are displaying. You've really got to summon all your energy in order to push back through that foot to get up onto the other box. And indeed, Jonathan does that particular repetition particularly well by keeping his left foot firmly planted before he then triple extends up onto the box. In terms of reps and sets, we're looking at about four sets of five to six repetitions of the double footed jumps and then four sets of five repetitions on each leg of the single ones. Let's consider some of the individual muscles that are crucial to acceleration and sprinting. Research actually indicates that the adductors and the hamstring muscles may be the more important of the leg muscles, together with the hip extensors and flexors when it comes to sprinting. So it can be worth targeting those muscles specifically. Now, incidentally as well and very interestingly, Females tend to have less hamstring strength compared to male sprinters and therefore working on those muscle groups if you're a female could improve your sprint specific power. Regular channel viewers will again know 
that I'm big on, as I've indicated in this video as well, eccentric and isometric training. But this year we have upped the concentric training of some of the athletes in order to see if this will push up their general ability to express power. And it does seem to be working in terms of them being able to generate more power off of the takeoff, for example. In a future video, I'll take a look at other ways to improve your acceleration, such as with these bar drills and with sleds and hill runs. As usual, thanks for watching and good luck with your training and competitions. And do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my other social media.